Right, here we are. The first leg of the journey. Where are we going to? Uh, Vegas. Vegas, then Florida Keys. We've got lots of things planned. Yeah. Yeah, lots of fishing, hopefully lots of adventures. And it's set for 43 degrees. <laughs> Good morning. Hello, good morning. Welcome back to the fish locker. Out on the boat. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're out in Las Vegas. It is my favourite time of day. Even though actually in the UK, <laughs> the UK is eight hours ahead of us here. So although it's sunrise here, yeah. we've had a long line. Having a little look around. There's the MGM Grand. There's the mini Statue of Liberty. Crazy roller coaster. Crazy roller coaster. So there's Trump Tower and the Eiffel Tower further down there. And this is the Excalibur. Yeah. Tell you what, there's some funny shots about at this time of day. Aren't the gyms are some funny people at this time of day? Yeah. We actually, there isn't going to be that much video in it of Vegas. I just thought I'll put it in because it's such a spectacle. We are here for Mrs. Fishlocker's work. She is at a conference. I might put a little tiny clip in here now. We are soon to be heading to the Florida Keys. This is going to be a little bit of a vlog about our travels to the Florida Keys. Yeah. Yeah. Do lots of fishing, lots of eating, lots of outdoor activities. Now what we need to do now is try and find somewhere suitable to go for breakfast. Because the uh, the spectacle of these casinos is it's crazy, but it's not really the type of place that you want to be at this time of morning. Because there are all sorts of strange people about. Yeah. Ladies of the night, there's all kinds of strange things going on. Yeah. So yeah, it is half past five in the morning here and it's already well over 30 degrees yeah we're gonna go find some breakfast i feel like pancakes this morning what do you feel like um, frosties and waffles so there you go i hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in a bit This is like when you see the pyramids from one down, from only one direction and then you look and you've got all that behind you. <laughs> Well, we've made it to the Keys. We've just stopped off really quickly. This is Worldwide Sportsman, one of the biggest Bass Pro shops around. Tell you what, they make tackle shops different down here. This guy, you can see him there. That's a triple tail. I caught one of those off West Africa on a hand line. They lay flat on the surface, a bit like a sunfish does, and they hide under like weed. And they create a shadow so that fish will, like little prey fish, will hide in the shadow underneath them. Get them. I'm gonna pick up some fluoro, some hooks, hopefully a drop net, and a little bit of bait. I do like my muppets. There's some fancy ones here, isn't there? Upon landing in Miami, I rented us a vehicle and drove us down to Florida Keys. It's no problem driving in the US with a UK driver's license. As there was four of us with four bags of luggage and a big rod tube, I rented us an SUV. Even though it was big for us, that was still a small car on the road. Well, we have arrived. I've just finished unpacking the car. This was the smallest car they had available. The last time that we visited the Keys, a lot of people have been asking me about 
about the accommodation, about the places that we went to go and eat, what we thought about it. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a walk around of the place that we're staying in. It's just an Airbnb. I'm not going to show you the exact address because I don't know whether or not the owners want it showing yet. But first impressions, I really like that. You know, we've just got all the bags in. That's not my boat, by the way. We've just got all the bags in now and we're having a little tiny bit of an unwind because with the difference in time zones and flying through the night, yeah, we're all beat and it is red hot. Got our fish locker branded luggage. A little bit of a look around the kitchen. Our daughter's bedroom is through there, I'll leave her be. There's one. And James is, is all the way in here. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms and right in the centre of Marathon. You just enjoy yourself there. But, I'll drop myself out. Yeah, it's not a coincidence that we have a dock. I had a look around a few of the other places when I was here last. And yeah, they are, they are all really well kitted out for people who want to come and bring their own boat. They'll just launch them nearby and then steam around here and then dock them up. All of them have got like a fish prepping station. Here's here, look. Just better kitted out than we are in the UK for stuff like this. Yeah, we've got a pond where James can play and I can fish at the same time. I'm looking forward to that because, because we're that close to the open ocean I reckon I'd be able to get some sharks off of here. A nice boat up there. Yep. We uh, we stopped off. We stopped off at what was it called? The, the outdoor sportsman or something like that. We stopped off at a really big bass pro shop. Picked up a few pieces of tackle. We're just about to go out the way now to go to Windixie and get ourselves some groceries, and then we'll get ourselves sorted for today. And uh, hopefully. <laughs> I'll, I'll get a line out. There's actually two big pelicans just flown past. So yeah, first impressions are brilliant. Yeah, just a little trip to the shops. Right, it's our first, well, our first day, our first evening in the Florida Keys. The sun is just setting off there and I'm trying to do a little tiny bit of shore fishing. This is our accommodation, the one flying the flag. And I'm just setting up to do a little bit of fishing. I've been here literally 20 seconds. I've had enough chance to be able to throw a line out and it comes straight back. And I've managed to land myself three brilliant live baits, which are gorgeous looking striped grunt. She did have a double hookup. I was too busy messing about getting the lights on to be able to show you. Unfortunately, like I say, it always kicks off all at once. There is a little black tip reef shark. <laughs> a little tiny green moria. Beautiful looking fish. Now that is a stunning looking fish. But like I say, I have no idea what it is. A lovely mutton snapper. Now they really are a pretty fish. I think this one's still below the minimum landing size, but they are stunning look. After visiting probably five tackle shops, I really wish I'd found this place first. These guys in here, everything that I needed, leader, hooks, bait, leads, the lot, and hopefully some good info. And I am treating my lovely wife to our anniversary fishing trip. Mm -hmm. It was, um, up until COVID, it was a tradition of ours to go on a fishing trip for our anniversary. We missed a couple, we've, we've done a sharking trip, we did a skate trip, and we've mm -hmm. done all sorts. Today we're going out fishing with two conches, 
in the Florida Keys down at Marathon. This is something where I really cannot emphasise enough how massive a deal this was. To set the scene, we were steaming along around 20 knots in four feet of swell. At 100 metres to one side of the boat, I spotted a diver in the water in clear distress. So I signalled to the skipper and pointed him out. It turned out that the lad in the water had lost his diving buddy and both of them had completely lost their boat. We were nearly 20 miles out at sea and three quarters of a mile from anyone else at all. If we hadn't spotted them there and picked them up, these guys would have never been seen again. Good luck. Sir, thank you so much. Chris, Chris. Did you a good date for the day? Yeah. No? Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Easy, he don't want to come up. Easy on the rod. I don't want to break that rod. You might have to go to the other side. Maybe swing around. There you go. That way I can. There you go. Once he gets under the boat, it's hard for me to nail. So that's the deal. You alright? Just unwinding after our anniversary fishing charter. Ah, yeah, I feel just salty. Yeah, I think we had about 10 bonitas all together. <laughs> yeah, and then I just got completely blitzed by, one was definitely a shark and one was, was pretty sure was a glide grouper. But add it on, yeah, yeah. Got the fish on the feed and then the shark's coming. But yeah, that glide grouper, whatever it was, it, it's, um, the bloke the skipper was saying to me, he said, oh, I thought you were going to snap that rod. It was, yeah, we, we weren't kitted out ready for it. It's a uh, 15 pound class spinning gear, 100 pound glide grouper. And you're lucky that I've caught you because that, that mark there on the side of his mouth had somebody else's hook in him. Somebody else had either cut it off or lost it. So yeah, I've, I've taken out some old fishing gear from him. Do you want to come here a second, James? Look. Do you want to feel his back? Like sandpaper. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh, that was yeah. so hard. That was a bit rough. Right. Not a bad little size one, isn't it? It's a bonnet head shark. <laughs> Calm yourself down lad. Ooh, very nearly. Well, I've taken the hook out for him. I took the extra hook out. But he very nearly had my fingers then. Like, considering that it's only like what that long. The other way, well, it's nearly double figures. But it's the crazy thing about it is like its teeth. It's only got a real, real little mouth, hasn't it? I tell you what, he's solid. He weighs a lump. James has got his chips and there's the chatter boat that we were on yesterday oh he's got some fishing line in his mouth look can you see it see it underneath him Oh, 
at him just cutting about. That's like a live bait tank. I bet them little tiny fish inside of there are panicking like crazy. Oh, there's another two underneath, so there's five altogether. That's about the size of one of them that I hooked off the bridge. They are pretty much everywhere you go. You will see wild chicks and chickens running about the place, don't you, James? They are, yeah, they are everywhere. We are out. I've managed to convince everybody that we're going to go on a family fish locker charter. It's going to be an inshore day today. When Hannah and I went out on the boat, I'd said to her, I was like, I'll be flat calm, it'd be alright, it wasn't, it was really rough. <laughs> So we have guaranteed that there is going to be flat calm and it's going to be inshore fishing in shallow water today. Favourite time of day. Ready to go step down to your mum? Good lad. You got it. Just swing it to me, listen. There you go. That was the case. Yeah. <laughs> ah, he's got my finger. I got you, I got you. Johnny, put my cup. Oh, okay. Nice size one. That's a good one. Oh, good. That's dinner size for sure. Mmm. <laughs> it's it's it is like a frame, isn't it? A photo with it, though. Spray so out. There you go. Just pr spray it a little bit. A little bit more. And he stinks from the bin. <laughs> so we're giving him a wash. <laughs> a little tiny bit more, James. There you go. Oh, he likes that, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, he was red hot when I picked him up. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> what are you doing? Little tackle station. Learning from me, me <laughs> harsh lessons these last couple of sessions. Changing on the tackle road. I'm just wick for biting you. you. See them little teeth in there. Yeah, look, he's had a hook in him. See that side of his mouth? He's had a hook in him before. Well, shows you how big it is. Tag number 411630. Tag number. No, it's not, it's a barracuda. Holy smokes. James. This is terrifying. <laughs> Look at them teeth. That was plenty 
close enough, thanks. <laughs> It is our last full day in the Florida Keys, isn't it? Yeah. So while your mum is organising, getting all of our stuff together and packed, James and I have volunteered to go out for a bit of a walk, haven't we? Yeah. We, uh, well, I'm thankful actually, this is probably our last day because it is cloudy, rainy and blowing a gale. But we are just going to go and um, have a little look around one of the local parks, aren't we? James wants me to try and catch a lizard and iguana. There are loads, and I mean thousands, of like big green iguanas everywhere. James wants me to catch one of them. I'll put it in our suitcase to bring home. Got a fed we'll give it a go. Maybe get a bite to eat as well, eh? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I've um, I've noticed, I've, I've travelled a bit around America. Uh, one of the things that I really like is I like their parks. I mean, their parks are. We generally think of a park as being like half an acre with some swings and a slide one. But yeah, they do it really well. You see them cactuses over there, Jimson? Oh, yeah. they're so cute. Yep. Yeah, quite a lot of them have got like a lake in them as well, which is okay to, okay to fish. This one, I was hoping it's going to back up onto the sea so we can go and down and have a bit of a walk on a beach. But our, uh, our time in Marathon, I just kind of thought if I can... Oh, what we got here? Under here, look. There is an old, looks like, an old hornet's nest. I'm glad it's an old one. i pass on some of the things that we've stayed in Marathon. This is our, our second time staying in Marathon. Now, um, we've stayed in Airbnbs both times and it's been fantastic. We, we have absolutely no problems. See that little gecko on that bin? Yeah. Absolutely no problems at all. Um, roads are really easy to navigate. The only issue, I don't know if you can hear them, Cicadas. See if we can't find him, James. Where is he? You're looking for a bug about that big. Called a cicada. They are an interesting creature because they start off, they live underground for years and then they just come out and make loads of noise. He's up there. But yeah, when they, when they come out of the ground, they like crawl up on a tree and then hatch out like a, like a caterpillar would hatch out. Apart from the, they leave their old shells attached to a tree, so sometimes you find these trees and they've got like hundreds of them all stuck around. And they go into that bug there with the wings. You can see this guy here. Yeah. The, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the, um, Supermarkets around nearby. We've been going to Win Dixie quite a bit, but there's there's ever so many other ones. Um, it is if you've got a big family like we do. It is often as cheap to eat out than to is to to buy like good veg and good meat and and to make your own stuff at home. So we've ate out probably two nights out of three. Um, just brought back for, just bought at breakfast stuff, but that's mainly because. We've got one vehicle between us and I've been going out most mornings, early morning, to go fishing. So they've had breakfast in the house and then I've got back at about 9, 10 o'clock and then we've gone out for something to eat. Yeah, um, we've really enjoyed going to Wendy's. Wendy's is just like a, a fast food burger place, but they do really good burgers. And the burgers are square, which we thought was a bit of a funny gimmick. Yeah, delicious. Uh, one thing, <laughs> if you're coming from the UK, is the sizes here, the sizes of the food. A medium here is like the same size as an extra large in the UK. So if you're gonna get a drink, you'll get like a litre would be a medium. The uh, Island Fish Company, there where we took a chart from, that was a great find there, great food, and I quite enjoyed the music they were playing. Uh, just a real nice chilled out atmosphere all around it. Loads of tackle shops if you're into your fishing. Good food, and everyone, um, probably bar one negative experience that I had with someone in a tackle shop. Uh, everyone has been incredibly helpful, friendly and welcoming, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. I found one of them cicadas and I was just trying to get the camera out and it's flown off. But... Cicadas. 
What have you found? Swamp. Swamp? Should we go and see if there's some alligators? No! Where's your sense of adventure? Are you sure you're a fish locker? If you don't get yourself into daft situations all the time, are you really even a fish locker? <laughs> James has just done an absolutely brilliant spot. I was busy trying to do some video of a cicada and it comes over and it's like, Dad, 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 I found an angry bird. And I was like, an angry bird? Where is it? Point it out to me. And I was expecting it to be like some real aggressive bird. It was a red cardinal. Now, I don't know if I've got any decent footage of it because it was too far away. But I was thinking angry bird and he was like, yeah, look, it's just like the bird of angry birds. <laughs> There, I don't know how close we're going to get to it. There's a cardinal. It really was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so an angry bird, red cardinal. You get some type of an idea now, like I've said in a couple of the shore fishing videos that I've done, that I've been having an awful lot of weed and it's been stopping things. Well, you can see to the extent I mean now is this little cove here is just full of it. And it's all this. Some little fishes. Yeah, I found little fishes. Found some fishes in the mangroves? Yeah, look. Oh yeah, well done. Just be careful because it's inside these mangroves and things like this. Huh? Where the big barracudas hide. Oh. Yep. And just like that, that is how quick it changes. Proper thunder and lightning storm, isn't it? Yeah. And yet, you go half a mile down the road that way, or half a mile down that way, and it'll be dry. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I've just really quickly snuck down onto here because these are lobster and crab boats, and I'm really interested to see how they do things differently. Now, all of these that they've got here, these are the traps, and these are the boats. Now, I was talking to someone the other day, they don't use any steel. We use steel and mesh. All their crab pots are either made of plastic or made of wood. Now, one of the things also is that they get more sharks here. So all the ones that there are made of like wire mesh, to keep the sharks out. If they were made of, made of twine like Mamana, they'd just get chewed up. So you look, they're all, all just made of wooden slats. Florida FWCC spiny lobster traps. And they've got concrete weights in them. Or these ones are plastic and I think if I'm not mistaken they need to have there look something that's biodegradable in them so if they ever get lost that wood will rot away so there's always an escape gap interesting well I find it interesting anyway well there's no point driving around in all this James and I have come to recce out a new spot to go fishing because we stayed fast here the other day when we were out on our charter. Now it is still pouring down with rain. But that is the seven mile bridge there. And unfortunately, yeah, so we can't. But there is a big fat iguana on the rocks down there. And we're gonna go and get him in a minute. Yes! Go on then. Go on then, you go around that way. Oh, he's a fast one. Oh, he's a swimming iguana. Oh, yeah, iguana poop. He was a fast one, wasn't he? Yeah, I don't know, he was a big fat. Right, are we ready? Yeah. Let's see him run, run, run. Stand behind me then. Oh. <laughs> Just finished uploading the first of the Florida videos. Where are we going now, James? Uh, to Miami. To IHOP first, then to Miami. Say goodbye to goodbye at the Florida Keys then, James. Bye, Florida Keys. Been absolutely hundreds of boats, all being, all being trailed back down. Turns out it's the, uh, the start of a short lobstering season that starts literally today, so we missed it by a day. Otherwise, hasn't it? There's been hundreds of them. This is the busiest yeah. that we've seen the roads in the entire time we've been down here. I'm really be glad you weren't getting involved in it. <laughs> On to Robbie's now, and then to Miami. Can I do one? 
You want to feed a pelican? Oh! Pelican behind you. Yeah, they don't have they don't have big teeth. They have a lot of them. Don't they? Yeah. Just well, you can see how small they are. They're just like little tiny rasping bits. Can you see this long bridge in front of us here, look. Miami and there aren't as many tackle shops as there has been down in Florida was there no. but you really cannot go wrong with a Bass Pro we can see they are absolutely money. massive aren't they James yeah, we can have you get them. everything from a boat to a bow and arrow and all the bits in between hello good morning welcome back to the fish locker out on South Beach in Miami <laughs> what even is that? We are at Bill Baggs State Park in Miami. That's a lovely schoolmaster snapper. This is my last chance effort to try and catch something decent in Miami. Whatever it is, I've got it. That is a lump of a shark. That's how big it is. Right. Four one one six three three. Seventy four inches long from the nose to the tip of the tail. The tail. And thirty one inches girth. So thirty one around just behind the pecs. Come on, big boy. Yep, time to go. <laughs> Absolutely thrashing it down now. Perfect timing. Last night in Miami, so we've dressed up and we're out to the sugar factory. Well, goodbye South Beach. We've been really lucky with the weather, haven't we? It just started raining, but I tell you what, when it rains, it pours around here. We're just talking about it's been a good night last night, only one shooting. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was an experience staying here on South Beach, wasn't it? It was interesting. Cultural experience. Some very strange aromas walking around the place as well. Yeah, these roads aren't for people with vertigo, are they? Well. James. Yeah. Back in sunny England. We have finally made it back home. We've had delayed flights, overnights, rail strikes, but we've managed it. People have asked me to, to give a little bit of a talk about some of the tackle that took me. Now I used just a, a large Bazooka Pro rod tube. I didn't want to give it like a review before I'd gone because I thought it needs to make it back in one piece first. All I did was I checked that as a piece of oversized luggage. And 
touch wood the only bit of damage that's happened is the clasp has come off bearing in mind that this went to Mexico this went to Mexico with me on, a, on another trip the way flew to Vegas and then from Vegas to Florida and then back over to the UK so it's not done so badly and it's had everything I mean that was my chum bags and it's got all my rods in there everything I'll unpack that and show you how much it's carried but also in fact the only tackle that I didn't I didn't take all of it with me was I bought a drop net while I was out there and some of the leads because it was just lead and it was extra weight for the suitcases I just bought the leads out there and give them away to a fisherman my drop net actually I gave it away to a chef who was in the hotel that we were staying at in Miami yeah I just took out some different weights of fluoro I have a tub in here that's got all my hooks and lures and in this bag I just took my reels so I took my shore reel my large live liner and some spinning reels all of my rods I took a shore rod a light spinning rod and a couple of conflicts the only bit of damage that they sustained was my shore rod ended up losing the insert of an eye and the reason that happened I saw it happen a TSA agent between um, between Las Vegas and Miami because the airport wasn't able to, to x-ray it he had to open it up and I'd packed it away all nice and neat and when he packed it all away I saw him jam something back in there and that's when it broke an eye so if it hadn't have been for that, the tube would have worked perfectly. But yeah, it's, um, it extends, I, I don't know exactly how big it extends to, but I'll put it in as an annotation here. But yeah, my shore rod here is a, a 13 foot shore rod, and it breaks down to two pieces. So we're looking at seven feet, and I just checked it as oversized luggage. I hope you enjoyed joining us, all the very best. See you later.